My name is Norman Cates. I am the experienced chair for Con Zealand. My name is Kelly Bueller. I am the business chair for Con Zealand. And I'm the vice chair experience. My name is Marie Pavletic. I look after Norman's vices. <laughs> now, you may be wondering, just before we quite get started, why we're wearing green shirts. There was a rugby game um, a few days ago, and New Zealand lost. And we had a bet with the Irish team. It was against the Irish team. And so, hence, Kelly and I are wearing green Irish jumpers, jerseys. And we also had a little blessing that we thought we should uh, give to the, to the Irish among us. <laughs> May the road rise to meet you. <laughs> May the wind be at your back. And may you be in heaven half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. <laughs> right. Um, we're just going to run through quickly a little presentation. Oh, oops. Force of habit, it's been a long time. Um, thank you very much for all your help over the last eight years and, and support. Uh, what we would like to do now is just rerun our, uh, our video uh, that we played at the, um, the site selection announcement in Con Jose. That's oh, right, I'm sorry. At World Con 76. <laughs> there I was at a convention in 2010, and someone volunteered me to start a bid for a New Zealand World Con. And before I knew it, people were throwing money at me. <laughs> but New Zealand just seems like a silly man. Nothing cool has ever happened here. It's gloomy and ugly. <laughs> And especially not Wellington, it's got dangerous creatures. <laughs> Nobody cool would want to come. It might be raining and cold. Actually, that last bit might actually happen. <laughs> and besides, we'll get no support from anyone. Kill everyone, and can I say a huge thank you to the World Science Fiction Society for confirming Wellington, New Zealand for the 78th World Con in 2020. Uh, I am New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern, and I wanted to extend my personal invitation for all of you to come to Wellington, New Zealand, and enjoy Worldcon here. Well, if we could persuade anyone to come, what would they be looking forward to? There we go. So, so yes, the Prime Minister says you have to come. Um, we just wanted to, whoops, sorry, <laughs> here we go. 
And we just wanted to very quickly, most of you have probably seen this before, just let you quickly know um, some of the positions that we have. Obviously, you can talk to us. There's more on our website. We are recruiting now, so uh, be, be careful. I mean, please come and talk to us. Uh, we also wanted to just very quickly say the kind of approach, the kind of theme and um, look we're trying to go for. We want to boldly go there and back again. Um, we want themes of exploration and discovery, but also the Worldcon is a big tent. Um, it's a place for um, we can all come together and meet people and ideas in a world of science fiction and fantasy. And combining these two, cruise ship to the stars. Because why not? All right. Um, I'm just going to speed through these, these si slides. Our location is Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, dates 29th of July, 2nd of August. There's a, there's a site map for Wellington on our website. Uh, we are, of course, welcome to talk to anyone later on or as we go. Facilities, we have an ex exhibition space. We've negotiated a cheaper deal on one of our facilities as well, so that's all good. Um, uh, so accessibility, Wellington is generally accessible. Um, we have access to enough Mobis for people, we expect for people who need them, and we are in negotiations with a bus company for circulating buses, some of which can be modified to take Mobis, but that is cost dependent. Um, so, Tenekotu, 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 Katoa. Thank you. We would be now glad to take your questions. So once again, if you have a question, stick your hand up. The runner will be around with a card and pen. Just to kick off, um, just because basically I, I've spent a chunk of time in Wellington, you, you've had to go with a, a number of reasonably spread out facilities. Um, and, and it's good to see that you've got you know, potential discussions with a bus line. That is, however, very cost dependent. What are your what are your anticipated times between the venues, and what are the undercover options, handicapped options, etc., if you can't get a deal with a bus company? Okay, the two furthest venues are 600 meters apart. Um, the the sidewalks have cuts. There's ramps on the pedestrian bridges. It's not difficult to find a route that goes undercover. It would be slightly more than 600. I think it'd probably be up to 800 meters on a fully undercover route. Um, but it's not as far apart as it seems because Wellington is a tiny little city. I know you look at this map and it looks like, oh, so that's it's two and a half blocks that, uh, that spread between the, the nearest and the furthest places. But assuming that the weather as it is very unpredictable, once again, wh what sort of options are available for people in Mobis, for people with, with disabilities? I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it's th there have to be some options, and the things, just to give you a hint, I'm talking about are things like paratrans, taxis, etc. Yeah, there's, there's paratrans, there's taxis, there's um, the bus company that we're talking to. Um, we will have something at least at the busiest times. We're just not sure how far we can extend it. What we're planning to do is to concentrate the daytime activities to one side of the city and the, or one side of the, the thing and then the, the evening activities at, at the other. So I know that there will be activities at both places, but, but for the most part, the same people wouldn't have to be traveling back and forth between them all day and they won't have to have uh, long stretches between panels so that people can get places. Um, the bus company has an Ealing bus and they're willing, they're suggesting actually, they're quite helpful and they've been suggesting possibly taking some further seats out of the front to make additional room if, the, if there are a lot of Mobis in their lodge. And a question about tours, um, very specifically where the studios, um, but, but you know, in, in more general terms, um, are you looking to arrange those? Um, is there a possibility of doing that? Yes, so um, the same bus company that we're talking to does um, 
they have uh, tours on the North Island, tours on the South Island, and tours locally in Wellington. They do tours from Auckland down to Wellington, then they'd be happy, happy to put together a special tour for us. We've started talking about it already, so that a group of fans could go together from Auckland to Wellington on a tour that goes by some of the points that might be of interest to fans. And also, we're planning to have some wine tours from the hotels to the um, nearby, there's it's about a two hour drive to the nearby um, wine region. And so um, there's also a Gold Star Dark Sky um, Reserve in that area. So we might have some of the evenings, since it will be winter, it'll get dark early so we could easily have a, if there's a clear night, we could have a dark sky tour and still make it back to the hotels for bed and not need to stay someplace else. Um, as, as many of you are probably aware, Weta Workshops is right there in Wellington, and they would be delighted to take people <laughs> on tours as far as they can. Um, it is a specialized tour. Um, you, nobody's going to be allowed all through the workshop, but there, it is a tour which gives some behind the scenes, um, and uh, they're actually quite fun, those tours. Um, so for the person asking about the hotel rooms, that information is in their questionnaire and that'll be available on the SMOFCON website. It has the distance and the prices. What is your party situation looking like? So we plan to have our parties in a central area, um, a, like a fan zone sort of area like there was at London and at Mid-American. Won't be able to do a large amount of food service because what we have is a is a contract that's based on the um, on a food show contract where they give out small samples of their products to the people who are coming along. So we can give out small samples of um, regional things to give the flavor to the parties that we're used to having. There will be um, a bar on site. There will be a snack bar on site. There are an amazing number of restaurants all over Wellington, and um, we're working to try to make this as much fun as possible. But specifically on the, the party situation for the traditional Worldcon um, around things like alcohol, food. The alcohol food. is up to us, but there's a very strict um, responsible host law, so it's, it's uh, it's dependent on how confident we are that everybody can live up to the responsible host law, and my expectation is that we'll decide to go with the venue's bartenders just to uh, not have to have that concern. So that would mean that Worldcom parties would be basically funding that, so that would be a cost? Um, it would be, it could be a cash bar set up there, so I think it would be a cash bar in the party area, like there was in London. Okay, um, we're out of time, so thank you very much for that.